Crisis Group report, we unpack Libya's economic crisis and the closures that have affected uh, Libya's oil and gas installations over the past two years. To do so, we have traveled across the country. We visited the main oil terminal that has been affected by closures, Sidra Oil Terminal, uh, three times over the past three years. We visited the oil fields down in the south, Shadara Oil Field. We have also interviewed uh, Libyan top economic and financial uh, experts and of course the politicians from the two sides of the political divide to understand the drivers of the current situation. two years, Libya has suffered a series of economic problems. First of all, the drop in oil production due to closures in the oil fields and oil terminals. Secondly, the drop in uh, global oil prices, which fell from almost $100 in 2014 to lower than $50 in, at the end of 2015. And thirdly, it has suffered of uh, mismanagement and corruption in the public funds. To make things worse, since the summer of 2014, Libya's economic problems have gone hand in hand with its political crisis. In fact, since uh, August 2014, the country has two parliaments and two governments, each with its own claim to legitimacy. These rival institutions have been fighting over the control of the country's oil revenues. The drivers for the closures of the oil fields and terminals are multiple. Initially, when they started in late 2012 and 13, these appeared to be sort of small actions of protest by local constituencies who use the closure of these oil and gas installations to essentially bargain uh, with the state. Another driver for the closures were the rivalries between security factions. The closures of oil terminals and, um, and oil fields actually came to have a, a very important political dimension. In fact, allegations of corruption by state authorities already in the Gaddafi era triggered and gave life to a pro-autonomy movement in the east where most of Libya's oil is extracted. Resolving Libya's economic and political problems becomes of utmost urgency. The question, however, is how to do that. In this report, we suggest other options that can be taken, steps that can be implemented. Libya does not need to wait for a government of national unity to start tackling in a coherent manner its economic problems. Obviously, a final solution to its economic and financial woes can only happen with a government of national unity. But the international community, in the meantime, can help Libya take some initial steps in healing the wounds. <laughs>